Hi, we're live. Hello, everybody. We are today here to talk about beating writing slumps. We're a little bit late as usual, but I feel like, I mean, 15 minutes, that's not that bad for us. That's not, that's not great. great. <laughs> it's all time for the work. <laughs> so I guess my main question for you guys to start off with about beating writing slumps is sort of the same question I always ask about writer's block. And like, what do you think of as a writing slump? Do you think of it as like one day, three days, a week? Like what for you is a slump? <laughs> I was making <laughs> over there already. <laughs> What do you think One of day. <laughs> and what usually causes it for you? So I have um, Megan first. Uh -huh. That's a good question. Uh, for me, it's definitely like longer periods. Um, think closer to like maybe a week or two, like two weeks without writing is when I'm like, oh no, this is getting bad. But really, like I feel it most when it's like, I'm trying to sit down and write and I'm like staring at the page and writing a couple sentences and it's like I'm there and I'm ready to put in the work and then something mentally just like freezes for me and it's like you are not going to get any of this done. Think of all the other things you need to do because you are not ready to write this story or it's not going well or it's not good enough and I think I it plays on that fear for me a lot. Like I have a lot of fear <laughs> that it's like not going to be good enough, um, which is always going to be true for a first draft, but <laughs> my brain believes it every time. I think that's all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I'd say same on the time frame. Like it's gotta be at least a week, usually two before I really think of it as a slump. And yeah, for me, it's a lot of like, even if I like actually like I want to write and I like want to get work done but I like can't like muster up the energy or I like can't focus enough to work on it um or like just can't figure out where the story's going um yeah so any of those sorts of things where I just like really want to but just can't for some reason yeah I'd say mine's a little bit less but that's because kind of like everything to me is if like I don't do one habit for more than like three or four days at a time then i'm like i need to do it now i haven't been doing it forever so you know that kind of is like if i need to clean something or i you know, have to write an assignment or like whatever after a couple of days of not doing it i'm like i need to do it all i'm gonna get such a slump i don't know what i'm doing anymore i'm gonna be so behind so like writing that happens too but then also it's been you know like somehow that like three days turns into like a month and then you're like oh okay well <laughs> i have been in a slump yeah, I actually am exactly the same as what Rachel was describing. Like if I go for like three days and I don't do my writing, I get kind of panicky because, and I actually know like, cause I have gone for longer, especially for revisions, not as much mm -hmm. writing, but with revisions, if I put it aside for too long, I will absolutely come back to it and kind of have to start over again almost. Like it's, yeah, um, yeah my it gets confusing, you know, where, where I left off. It's not like my actual drafting process where I go back to the last chapter, reread the last chapter. And I've usually left myself notes. It's like this, this, and this is happening next. And then I can just be like, great and return to it. Like nothing happened. Whereas revising for me is harder and I have to be in a, in a very specific mindset. And if I've been sort of pushed out of that mindset by a three or four day slump, so to speak, um, it's really, really hard to get back into. So I do have that same panicky reaction that Rachel was saying about. And for me, um, I don't really have, especially now, because my writing time is so precious, like I barely get it now. So like, I don't actually get like a writer's block block, like not that I can't diagnose. Like if I, if I sit down and I have a slump or a block, it's like there's something behind it and I just have to figure out what it is. And it's usually like, I haven't plotted or it has been three days and I'm totally thrown out of things. So there's always like something I kind of have to diagnose and try to tackle to get myself out of it. And that really leads me to my next question is how have you guys successfully pulled yourself out of a slump before? Um, I usually look at all of my inspiration photos again. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily like get new ones, but just, well, like sometimes, but mostly just look at all the stuff and be like, okay, let's, let's, you know, pick one of these photos and like write something on it and then like go back to it. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll sometimes try to like read stuff that like what I wrote just previously, like the last scene or something. Um, Cause kind of like you're saying, Aaron, like, yeah, like when I've been in a slump for a while, then it gets even harder because yeah, I've like lost my train that I was on, you know, lost the thread. And so like reading over some of it and like making like a really like simple outline of like, these are the things that need to happen in the next scene or these are the things I was going to revise in the next scene. Um, just to help me, yeah, get like my mind back into like what I'm gonna do. Cause so much of it is just being like, I don't know what I'm gonna do <laughs> like and just mm -hmm. you know so giving myself like somewhere to go with it and like a step-by-step -step plan helps a lot mm -hmm. yeah I really like um in addition to those things finding deadlines um I know one of like the biggest slumps I ever got into was when I first got my agent and we went out on sub and I was like well I have nothing I have to do for at least a year. So, and I just like sat there and didn't do anything for the longest time. Um, and so like finding deadlines, even if you're in a situation like you're on sub or you are considering starting querying soon where there's not like a hard deadline, finding something that's like by this date, I want to have this done. Um, and sometimes life will throw them at you. So like the one I'm using to get out of my current writing slump is the fact that I'm giving birth in less than three months. <laughs> so the panic is setting in and it's like, oh my gosh, I have to do so many things before that time comes. Um, yeah. Yep, then you will also, have a small human. <laughs> yeah, and I've also used things like uh, Pitch Wars um, has been a great help for me or when I first started querying, I wanted to do it before the new year. So I set my deadlines accordingly so that I could start querying by the new year and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so just like finding something. It's so funny what you said about giving birth because just before Charlie came, around the four through four month mark, it was the same. Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like <laughs> there's literally a ticking clock counting yeah. down the seconds. And it was the same, I was like frenzied writing. <laughs> Because before that, it feels like it's just never going to end and you're yes. going to die pregnant. <laughs> now it's like, oh crap. And you realize, oh my God, I'm going to have this little tiny person that's not going to let me write for forever. So I need to get all of the writing done forever in three months. <laughs> yeah. All the writing done for the next 10 years or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At it's least not four. It's, like... it's not true. I have written like, half a book since I've had Charlie, but like... Oh, hey, good job. I have no child and I haven't written half a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that that half of the book is good. I'm just saying <laughs> <that>. <laughs> And lots of questions. Um, so, uh, yeah, for getting myself out of a slump, that's usually really hard for me. And usually, um, if it's a slump, like... Usually it's just a slump, like this week, for example, I lost all my childcare at once, which was Ooh. crappy. Yeah, because my babysitter had a cold and then my in-laws who are wonderful usually take him two days a week. So I lost four days of writing, which were all of my days of writing. So I don't necessarily qualify that as a slump because there was literally nothing I could have done about that. Um, but now I am in this like frenzied catch up mode and finding it hard to like almost concentrate. Like, so, so when I'm trying to pull myself out of that, it's a little panicky. And again, like I said, I'm back to two thing, two different manuscripts of revisions and it's been a week, which really, <laughs> really sucks. So like, I, I kind of like have to go through the work I was doing before to like reacquaint myself with it. And that's usually the only way I get myself out of a slump because usually the slump is not just like a block. Like I said, I'm not like a Stephen King person where like Stephen King doesn't believe in writer's block. And I think that's stupid. <laughs> There's a few things he says that I think are stupid. There are a few. Yeah. There's a few things that he's like, I don't experience this. So it doesn't Therefore, exist. Or it doesn't exist. Or like, yeah. I don't like to write in this way. So no one should. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He says, it's the same with he's like, really bashes people who plot like mm -hmm. plotting is like the crutch of the unimaginative or something and i'm like yeah okay what yeah, yeah he literally says 
something really insulting about people that plot. And I'm like, I plot a lot, so mm -hmm. I don't need your attitude, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> All I can think of now is just something like, like, I don't like apples, so that means that apples are banned everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, that's true. Like, what? <laughs> that one's true. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just because it doesn't work for you, it seems like really almost irresponsible to say that like out loud mm -hmm. to the world when you have, yeah. a, you have a fan base as him. What if there's some poor author that's like idolizes you and is like, oh, well, Stephen King thinks I'm a, an unimaginative bore if I plot. And then they're like killing mm -hmm. themselves trying to pants it, even though they're not naturally a pantser, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. If I, if I pants and write a whole manuscript that way, it's... <laughs> It's stupid. Like I read it over and I'm like, this is bad. This is a bad <laughs> manuscript. And it was, like, I guess he feels like, yeah, I guess he feels like he has enough celebrity that he can kind of get away with saying whatever he wants. Cause he's like, whatever, I got money and like people are constantly buying my stuff. So I don't I care. So. I guess so. It's just, a, it's just a little disingenuous to like, be like, I do not yeah. experience it. Therefore it does not exist. Like writer's block. I don't experience it unless it's diagnosable, but people could get, <laughs> random unexplained writer's block and I'm not going to tell them that they don't because that's pretty ballsy just be like no <laughs> yeah don't no, and like and just because it has a diagnosable cause doesn't make it not writer's block you know like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like I think most people will admit that it doesn't tend to be like a oh it just happens you know like yeah, yeah. Most people like can say that like there's usually a reason behind it but it doesn't that's make it probably, like, less valid that it still happens. Like, yeah, that's probably true. I always just think of writer's block or like a writer's slump as people just being like, my muse has gone away and I'm just staring at the blank The page. muse thing does bother me. Yeah. <laughs> I need my muse to write and I'm like, oh, they're not speaking to me anymore. And I'm like, all right, well. <laughs> I have a cat named muse and she mostly just chews on things. So I don't need muse. <laughs> She's not helpful at all. Oh, man. I know we have a few comments. I don't know if anyone's watching. Um, section. I think it's mostly discussion about the whole cocky debacle. On oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been reading about that. Cocky gate. Me too. <laughs> ah, it's so addictive. I can't stop. <laughs> you guys know about it? Megan and Rachel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone <laughs> what? I spent like all day. Oh, Rachel doesn't know. Yes, this is delicious. We get to explain it. Oh, you get to explain it? Okay, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, so go ahead. Uh, a romance author has trademarked the word cocky on the front of her. Yes, oh, you know what? Rachel. I feel like I, I haven't, like, heard, I heard something about that on Twitter today, and I was like, what? Yeah, like, yeah. It's all over Twitter because everyone just, like, can't believe someone was having the audacity to do yeah. it. Yeah, no, I, I heard something about, like, I heard something, like, someone was basically saying, like, basically like, you know oh this author is going to copyright a word and like that's dumb but i kind of was like all right i just kind of scrolled past so i guess it's a big thing now that i'm, I'm missing out yeah. on yeah. She, Hockey? So she, really? she has like a series of books where i guess like the main characters their last name is like cocker or something and yeah, so okay. all of the titles of the books start with cocky so it's like cocky uh, cowboy cocky this and so like she trademarked it and it's like i know i was reading a bunch of stuff on it it's like she's trademarked like the specific like cocky in the font that she uses, but she's actually not allowed to do because the person who created the font specifically has a term in their conditions that says you can't trademark it. But anyway, um, and then she's also like copyrighted like the title, the actual title, the too. title like within the use of like her ser like a series, a series of books or whatever. I see. And okay. So sent out. Not her attorney. She. Not her attorney or her publisher. She has sent cease and desist letters. To a bunch of like smaller romance writers Authors, who have yeah. were cocky in their titles, being like, "Now that I have this copyright, you have to change your titles," including Third people publisher. published their books before her. <laughs> yeah, what? Real oh my God, her publisher is not doing it or involved because she is her publisher. She's oh yeah, she's indie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. I and see. Her, named her own imprint and yeah. yeah i'm just like okay i'm gonna use it like a terrible way but like how cocky do you have to be <laughs> you're like this is mine now this is just this word and like and none of you can use this word anymore that her is excuse is that she was like oh readers have contacted me disappointed because they thought they were buying one of my books and they were buying someone else's and so it's creating a confusion within my brand and it's like are well, your readers too stupid to look for your name like, on the front like, 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 
done that. I can probably say that. I was like, well, that's just like that's not your fault. Your readers are just idiots. Also, like, I feel like if like if a reader contacted me and was like, oh, I thought this was your book and I accidentally bought it, instead of being like, that is terrible, I'd be like, well, I hope you enjoyed this new book you discovered. Like, yeah. support this <laughs> other author instead of being like, they shouldn't be buying someone else's books. They should be buying mine. <laughs> <laughs> See how that worked out for her. You do not, yeah. it's basically shot well, herself in the foot. Yeah, well, now everyone's like making fun of her, so. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, people are calling her out on it and she's just doubling down too. Like, mm -hmm. if you wanna know how to completely set your career on fire and then walk <laughs> away, that is how you do it. Just go to her profile, look at what she's doing, and that's how you accomplish mm -hmm. that. This chat <laughs> is just very slowly devolving into like how to ruin your writing career. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Maybe but she yeah, has no. writer's block now. Yeah, <laughs> oh, terrible decisions. <laughs> Maybe she had so much time on her hands so because she had writer's blocks. Hockey <laughs> block jokes. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh dear! Oh dear! Um, oh my yeah, gosh. No, somebody did ask for our thoughts on that, and basically, I just don't think she's going to get very far with that. And she's pretty. Yeah, much she's not. Yeah, I know someone was saying that like if she tries to pursue these cease and desist letters very far it could end up invalidating her copyright because like the courts will realize that like saying you can't have a because there was a series published before hers that is like the cocky something series like another series yeah. that uses cocky and so it's like does she really have like a good case i don't think that you can if somebody has already used the the exactly. Yeah. 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 So well, I'm also thinking, like, if she's sending all these letters to people, eventually someone is going to be like, "Well, I'm going to get a lawyer," and then like she's going to be screwed because yeah. then they're going to like put it back on her. RWA is actually like getting yeah. involved. They actually they've said like everyone who got a letter from her, they're asking them to contact them, and they're going to yeah. like they're going to look into getting an attorney for all the other authors. So yeah, so when Romance Writers Association gets involved, like yeah, you really messed up your career. Yeah, I was going to say mm -hmm. not even just that, but like the legal implications of like mm -hmm. what she's doing. I'm like, this is a real opportunity to backfire on you. Mm -hmm. If someone decides mm -hmm. they want to take the time and money to make an example of you in the writer's community. Mm -hmm. Cause like there it's happened before. Like somebody, a blogger was sued by a photographer for simply just taking the picture and putting it on her blog. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was a lot of money, but it was just because he was so sick of people taking his pictures and using them without credit that he wanted to make mm -hmm. it example of her so yeah. someone could definitely turn around and sue her back i yeah. or she hasn't sued yeah. anyone yeah. i guess but they well, could yeah well I think, like, I think like the the, the... <laughs> it's saying like the art community i think is is kind of like not looked down upon but it's kind of like invalid in like invalidated oh, that's what i'm looking talk. for yeah, so like, well, even even writers being like, oh, you know, you'll do this for free, right? Or like, oh, I'll only pay you like this little bit or whatever. So it's, or oh, I'm just gonna take your photo because like, whatever. It's just like it's on the internet, so I can just take it and stuff. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's not always. You should yeah. be paying for your work, <laughs> paying for people to do work, and writing is work. Yeah, that could be a whole nother chat. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. We'll okay. write it down. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll yeah, revisit this like at some point. Yeah, do we have any on topic questions? I don't know if we do. Because <laughs> that could be a whole chat. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, we have a question uh, from Dr. Luxful. Uh, thank you for bringing us back on track, Dr. Luxful. You rule. <laughs> uh, how do you get yourself back to your novel when you've been putting it off for the longest time? Mm. Uh, excellent question. Mm -hmm. I reread it, honestly, not the whole thing, but like a couple chapters back so I can get back into it. It's the only way I can. Yeah, and I actually find a lot of times when I'm in the middle of drafting, I don't let myself look back because I don't want to like see the garbage sentences and be like, oh, this is terrible. I should stop writing forever. But when I'm in a slump and it's been a little bit, um, Almost every time when I go back and look at the old stuff I've written, you know, like, yeah, there are some garbage sentences, but the things that stand out to me are the things that like made me so passionate about the story in the first place. Like there's a paragraph of great characterization or um, a plot point that I had forgotten I had planned to do and I'm really excited to write it. 
I like mm -hmm. set up a date and I do this not necessarily with only writing, but like with stuff I don't really want to do. Like, oh, I have to you know call my doctors and set up an appointment or I have to, I have to call the dentist the other day. I'm like, I really don't want to do this. I'm, like putting stuff off and like whatever. I'm just like, you know what? No, like tomorrow afternoon, you know, I have a, I have a, I'm going to come home from, you know, doing this and then I'm going to have two hours and I'm going to do everything on that list. And I just kind of like do it. So like sit down and you're like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to call my dentist. I'm going to book that appointment. I'm going to, you know, clean my kitchen. Like I used to like set it in stone. Like tomorrow's the day from like 1 PM to 3 PM. I'm just going to do all the stuff I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So I like, you know, it's like sit down and be like, okay, like just, just go with it. Even if it's like, completely garbage, just like start it again, yeah. just dive right back in. I like, yeah, I try to set like really small goals to start. Like if it's been a long time then it's like, I just need to write like a hundred pages or a hundred, hundred pages. Oh my God. A <laughs> hundred <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> A hundred words like today. A you know? like, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of times when I've been like in a long writer's block, like I can't get like 500, a thousand words out in one day. I can get like a hundred words down and that like feels like pulling teeth, you know? And so, but just so like letting myself just do that little bit. And then the next day it's easier to write even more. So like not expecting like that I'm suddenly going to like jump back in and like crank out a few chapters in one sitting or something. Mm hmm. I find like for me, if it's a motivation thing, um, sort of getting back into whatever it was that inspired me in the first place um, is really good for me. Whether it was like a TV show or a movie or a book series I was reading, um, like I'll revisit old books and reread them. That's one of the reasons people ask me, why do you keep all those books? Like all of my mm -hmm. bookshelves are full. Like why don't do you? And I reread them and it's not. Really? Just, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's not just because I love the book either. Sometimes there's a certain mood I, I want to achieve or like there was a certain part that inspired me and I'll go back and reread the whole book just to get back into that mindset. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I'm already wanting to like reread. Oh, we talked about this last week, but A Darker Shade of Magic. Yeah, I, I know. Um, I am just the, on my own channel just this week. I did a, a video about a series I want to reread because there's so many of them. Like, yeah, oh, I don't have yeah. time for any of this, but I want to reread all of them. Yeah, I'm halfway through a gathering of shadows now, and it's so Ooh. good. It's so good, right? It's, it's so, so good. good. I love Red London and I love Lila. <laughs> it's a constant struggle because I always want I have so I have so many books that I want to read that I haven't read yet. I have such a huge to be read list. But I also have so many books that are so good that I want to reread. I want to reread right. the Red Boys <sighs> again. And I want to read of Le uh, London series again. Oh my God, so many. <laughs> no. That's why I really like having like the sequels and stuff. Cause it's like, oh, I'm, I'm reading a new book but I'm able yeah. to like analyze the world more intently because it's like, like I already know that I care a lot about it. I want to read it more like just for writing as well. <laughs> I guess mm. if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I'm reading the children of Children of Blood and Bone. Bone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. So good. I think that'll be it's one. Good. Yeah. I really like it so I want to, I want to read it so bad. Like I'm actually using it to prop up my computer right now, but um, <laughs> I want to read it so bad, but like we're Dallas. doing it for book club later in the year. And so I'm like trying to wait. So it'll be like really fresh on my mind. I'll reread it. Honestly, yeah. it's, so good. it's just really like atmospheric. Like I can mm, picture that's a good my, word for it. I can picture that word or the world there. I can picture the world like the the like sights and smells and sounds like I don't know she just does a really good job of drawing the world mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. one of those books yeah yeah we had another question um what do you do when you're in the middle of drafting and have to erase a character or possibly change parts of the plot completely I keep going I, I keep going and my story makes no sense and I go back and fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I pretty much just make a note that's like, starting here, this character yeah. does not exist. And then it's future Megan's problem. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll even, if I have some ideas of like, how to like incorporate something I've added or how to take something out, I'll like make a few notes, like go back and do these things later. But no, I do that a lot. Probably because I write so slow that like by the time I get to something, I've like changed my mind. I'm even like in the middle of revisions right now, like changing things. I'm like, oh great, I have to do another round to like fix yep. this stuff. Mm -hmm. I've actually, I don't think I've ever met an author that stops and goes back 
Yeah. Like every author I've talked to has been like, I just plow forward and fix it later. Yeah. The only, thing, think, yeah, yeah. Susan, the only thing I can think of is like Susan Denard, and that's because she like changes things so drastically that she'll like scrap mm -hmm. the oh, yeah, 30,000 so words and start over something. again kind of thing. Oh, I would hate that. <laughs> yeah. That's that. painful just thinking about no. it. <laughs> so painful. Yeah. And there yeah. was some author I saw. This was a while back. I don't remember who it was, but it was somebody on Twitter that was like, the more experience I get at writing, the easier it is for me to like get 40,000 words in and be like, this isn't working and just like scrap it and start at the beginning. And I was like, I don't think I'll ever get to that oh, point. Oh my <laughs> Lord, no. I would rather finish the book and then rewrite it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, once I'm finished drafting it, I'm not interested in, in like necessarily revisiting that yeah. intensely. Revising it, yes, I wouldn't be interested in going back and rewriting the whole entire mm -hmm. thing. But I think it was a yell fest or something. I remember an author saying that's literally just how she drafts every time. She writes the whole thing out, I think I remember throws that too. it away, and starts again. And I'm just like, why though? <laughs> yeah, but but how? <laughs> I would forget though. I would forget the way certain scenes play out, or or like clever things I'd inserted, and they would just never be recovered, and I'd be sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I'm totally fine with the thought of doing that, like, if if it has to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but I also write very short first drafts, and I have to beef them up a lot later. And so it's, like, not as hard to find the things I loved in 50,000 words as it is right. in, like, 90,000 words. Mm -hmm. Or in my case, 100 and something thousand words. <laughs> Damn. Top down. <laughs> yeah. I know if I stop that's like when I get paralyzed by all of the things I have to fix. And that is huge for me when I'm drafting. Like if I stop to think about all of the things that I'm going to have to change and how it's going to pull everything else apart, then I will spend like two weeks just trying to figure out everything. And I, I can't work that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never finish. I definitely never allowed myself to go like that far in word counts. Like it's only ever like, Maybe at most, I think I've done like 5,000 words and then been like, no, I can't do it anymore. And if there's like a part that I really want to write, I'll just like write it down, but then put it in a different book. I'm like, this isn't it. I can't, like, I'm not just going to like push through and like, oh, I'll just like write it and then rewrite it later. I'm like, no, if it's not working, we're just going to cut it off at the knee. Like, I can't do anymore. Even that's so difficult. I'm like, oh, God, delete. Like, oh, God, delete. Um. We had another question. Uh, how do you keep yourself motivated when, where did it go? When you're more interested in working on other projects um, that relate to your, wait, hang on. How do you keep yourself motivated when you're more interested in working on other projects that relate to your novel? Like research? I don't know what that means. I like, I uh, he's a, Mm -hmm. um, so someone recommended Evernote and Dark Lux will reply, that doesn't really work for me because I have so many projects running around in my head that I'll have to be finished within a certain time frame. Uh, right now I'm working on a role play system based on character archetypes and the hero's journey that has to be done by May 24th. So I think it is just like a lot of different projects that you have to be working on in the same time frame. Uh, I have, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a very quick interruption, but this is very rare. My cat came to, to <gasps> join me. So, and... so yeah. unimpressed. I know. <laughs> like never comes to visit me. So I'm like, this is very important. I'm sorry, your question is valid, but like, this is very important. <laughs> Permission for cat. <laughs> now she's just like, oh God. <laughs> Me. I regret this decision. Yeah, I regret it. <laughs> um, I I kind of have a I have multiple projects, but nothing so exciting as like a role playing thing. But I've got a couple of different manuscripts I'm trying to do, revise, and I actually split up my day if I can. So before lunch, I'm working on one project, and after lunch, I'm working on another one. Um, just kind of keeps my brain from spiraling into confusion and mass chaos, which is easy to do, so. <laughs> yeah, I think when there's like a project that you need to be working on because you have a deadline or whatever, and then like a project that you maybe like want to be working on, um, you can totally use one as like a reward for the other. So like 
if you get X amount of work done on the project you need to be doing, then you get to go play around with the like fun project mm -hmm. that isn't like as like time sensitive. Yeah, incentive. Mm -hmm. That's not candy because candy incentive doesn't work because I'll just eat it. <laughs> <laughs> candy works great for me. So because <laughs> you're weird, I don't understand how you have the self control. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> I can eat all the chocolate now if I want. <laughs> In fact, I already did. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. <coughs> well, I don't keep it in my house. Yeah. Rachel is gone momentarily because her cat is very angry. <laughs> Hungry cat. Oh, dear. Oh, Megan was frozen for me for a second there. Um, okay. So I what? One of the problems I always run into is that prioritization, like figuring yeah. out, okay, so what's most important for me yeah. to do right now? Because I, if I'm feeling slumpish, it is so easy for me to be like, well, I have this work project I have to do. And like, I'm going to get paid for that. So, um, or like, oh, well, there's a lot of dishes to be done. That is also a valiant thing. <laughs> for me, it's always the one that's like, if it's contracted or I have been paid money already for it, that is the most important. Like I have one that I want to go on subway, then I have one that it's already been contracted. And I'm like, the contracted one is the most important. Therefore, if I can't divide my day equally and dedicate equal time to both, then the contracted one needs to be in the morning and first mm -hmm. to like get that work done. Mm -hmm. And the other stuff is a bonus. So. And that's definitely like a, a point where you have to learn to treat writing like a job. Yeah. Um, for sure. Because it's very easy to be like, oh, it's, it's writing, it's art. I should be working on what I want to work on and what I find joy in. And like, yes, you should be finding joy in your work, but like it is also, work, also especially if someone yeah. has contracted you, if someone has paid you, um, yeah. like signed something, agreed to do something, then like you have to do it because yeah. it's your job. Yeah, you, you have a responsibility. Yeah, like I'm very, very lucky because my publisher is amazing. Like my editor, ha like I've, because my son, I had my son in January and she knew that. And then I, I, he had horrible health problems and he had to go get like intensive surgery when he was two months old, two and a bit months old. And then the recovery was rough. So like I kept her abreast of all of that. Um, and so she's been amazing just saying like, don't worry about the deadlines, just like take your time with it, revising and then send me it whenever, whenever you're ready. Cause she knows, you know, she has kids and everything, but I still, I still feel like this project outweighs all of the other projects that I want to work on because I, you know, she's still waiting for it. You know, it is still contracted. It is still the most important thing right now that I'm working on. So that always has to come first, even if I get, you know, excited about other new projects, which I do all the time. <laughs> yeah, syndrome. Mm -hmm. Um, there was something I was going to say to go along with that. Uh, Oh, I think Kelly did a video um, a while back about creating a schedule for her publishing release dates that I found particularly inspiring because um, Kelly is our resident self-publishing expert mm -hmm. and she last year published so many books and it like blows my mind just thinking about how much she was writing and publishing all at once. And um, a lot of the indie authors who are publishing, you know, upwards of a book a month sometimes. Uh, I don't know how they do it. Oh, yeah, I think we've also had uh, K.N. Lee has guest vlogged for us a couple times. I believe that's her name. I'll double check it. Um, and she's talked about how like, for her with her publishing schedule, um, since it's not as like contracted, this person wants this book by this date, for her it's very like, okay, well I have to do this every single day. This There's one book coming out a month. So um, 
I will go back in and find that video and get a link to it because it was crazy inspiring. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Kelly is so she is one person I really look up to when it comes to like organization skills. Yes, yeah, seriously. I have, I have zero organization skills. So she's like awe inspiring mm -hmm. to me. But and like, like self motivation. She's so I know, it's unreal. <laughs> um, one well, of, I guess, you know, if she gets something done, then she gets to eat. So like, <laughs> yeah. or like pay rent. So, so you know, that's good like great motivation. Um, but she, uh, speaking of Kelly, she, one of the things that helps me and what she did a video on this too which is what got me started doing it is having a journal specifically just for writing like what's going on with my writing not my actual writing so hmm. i sit down and i write the date and then exactly what i've done all to do with my creative stuff and my writing that day and usually it, it if i feel like i'm in a slum I'll go back and I'll read what I did that day. And, it, and it's like, oh, there's this big scandal on Twitter about this like author that trademarked this thing. And I'm like, so I'm reading this and I'm like, oh, it's because I spent half the day on Twitter, which yeah. is why this isn't a slump. This is me being super distracted. <laughs> Cause sometimes I'm not self-aware. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, I didn't realize I spent four hours on Twitter. I thought I just really quickly checked it and then went back to work. <laughs> no, I didn't. Mm -hmm. So. I, I do find that sometimes my slumps, quote unquote, are self-inflicted. <laughs> yeah. Very often. I want to say uh, Susan Dennard. It was. Yeah, I'm positive. <laughs> no, I want to say Susan Dennard did a great blog series that I will also get a link to um, where she analyzed. It was like from frab to fab. And... <laughs> Uh, FRAB was like an acronym for fear responses, basically stalling out your writing. Right. Um, and it was really interesting. Yeah, That's interesting. I, I know that a lot of writers go through that, but I don't think that I've, maybe I don't have enough shame, but I, <laughs> I haven't gone through the, through the thing where I'm like paralyzed by fear fear for me it was always like yeah i'm sending out all these queries like making it rain like it was always really exciting <laughs> to me to send out queries and to send a workout even though i got tons of rejections i don't know that was never one of i definitely had like i've been more like bummed out if i look at reviews and they're crappy reviews then i feel like oh now i don't want to write but not like fear necessarily i don't know if you guys ever experienced that I personally, I don't get very afraid about sending my work out into the world, but I do get afraid of like, like what if I don't, what if I put this out there and it's not my best and mm -hmm. like I look back on it and it's like, wow, I wish I hadn't done that one. I wish that one wasn't my first book or whatever. <laughs> like I have this really intense paranoia that I will put it out and then feel like there was something else I could have done to make it better and I didn't do it because I like didn't work hard enough on it or I like got lazy um, or that I'll miss publishing opportunities because I just didn't feel like working that day or whatever. And it like feeds into this vicious cycle of like, I'm being too lazy. Like I'm not working right now, not because of a good reason. I'm not working right now because I'm just being lazy and I'm gonna miss all these publishing opportunities because of it. <laughs> And the funny thing is, like, what you said, anything. what you said about the fear of releasing something and then not having it be your best work, like, that has literally happened to me. Like, I have a book out there that I've definitely thought of before, of like, like um, the published version of Frost. I'm like, that is not my best work. Should I take it down? And I've thought about that before, and I've looked at it, and I went, well, you know what? It's not a bad work. It's not a good work, and it, I could do better. But it's also every book I publish, I'm going to look back on that in five years and go, that is not my best work. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Of course. Take it down, you know, because you're going to grow and you're going to get so much better, like every time you sit down to write. So that was kind of my philosophy. And yeah, that that has been a fear. And it, I feel like it did happen to me. But at the same time, when it did, I was like, okay, I think it's just going to keep happening. So, and there's like yeah. so much pressure, especially in the YA world, for like your debut novel to be like yeah. your best book. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Have a great debut novel when like you don't have to. Like 
the yeah. Schwab's debut novel no one talks about. <laughs> you know, yeah. like mm -hmm. she has yeah. such a great career now. Yeah. So yeah, there's like a lot of yeah, a lot of pressure of like, what if this isn't my best work? But it's probably not going to be. Like you don't want your first book to be the best Absolutely. thing you ever write. Yeah, mm -hmm. Even yeah, it's true. And our, her first ones flopped too. Like, and yeah. then, uh, like I said, Maggie Stevotter's first were about like fairies or something. I've never read them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, know? her, yeah, I forgot about that. Like, this all yeah. the other day. I was like, what? These exist? Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Um, yeah, it's like the authors, the big what, the big name authors, they're famous for these particular series. And a lot of them, you think it's their first series because you just haven't heard of their first series. I think in particular, the really like solid authors are ones that their first series weren't great. Like I feel like you get the series, like their first series did really, really well. And then like their later books, like no one likes and like no one is satisfied with, you know? And it's those yeah. authors that like have grown and gotten like better. I don't know. Like, because I feel like it's authors like Maggie Stiefvater and V.E. Schwab and Susan Denard that are like, having really solid careers now in like Definitely. their second or third or fourth series. Mm -hmm. I feel like also there's um there's there's a thing about getting too much publicity and too much hype right away or mm -hmm. having your book. I think I know personally if my first book was so good that people are like this is it. You are not going to do better than that. If I mm -hmm. felt like that, I think that would damage mm -hmm. my yeah. career and my sense yes. of yeah. Well, like look how long it took Veronica Roth to come out with another book after the Divergent series. Yeah. You know? yeah. And like Suzanne Collins still hasn't come out with anything. Well, Hunger Games yeah. wasn't her first thing though. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know it wasn't her first thing, but like she hasn't done anything since. Yeah. So no. I mean maybe she didn't need yeah. to because now she's balling, but you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired. Like, yeah, pretty much. Tired. She's just swimming in her swimming pool of cash, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She just has you TV do. work, right? Oh yeah, 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 I think you're right. Oh, does she? Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. She wrote for like Franklin, the turtle cartoon and stuff. Oh my God, bless. <laughs> really? Yeah. Did they fight each other to the death in this? Yeah, cartoon? I know. Like that's gonna be an interesting Franklin episode. She has, oh, she has right a there. picture book. Franklin. She has like a children's <laughs> picture book too. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. I was they watching this a couple days ago. Uh, Victoria Schwab did a lecture at Oxford mm -hmm. um, for their like Tolkien lecture or whatever <laughs> and it was really good and she did talk in it about how um, her first book that really took off was actually her eighth published book. Wow. And Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah she's like all my other ones like they did okay not great but then A Darker Shade of Magic came out and it got like a lot of attention. And now mm -hmm. people go back and find her older books and stuff. But the whole the whole lecture was amazing. It's on YouTube. Everyone should look it up. At Oxford, she was speaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just writing it down so I can go back and read it. Yeah. Oh. It was like the Tolkien lecture. It's okay. the name of the series of lectures. Okay. Yeah, I want to watch that because I keep hearing about it. She posted it on like her Twitter and her Instagram and stuff. Yeah. Oh, cool. okay. mm -hmm. Um we had a question from Flautus58. Do you guys get blank page fright? Sometimes a blank page feels like an audience to me. I think a lot of people get that. Yeah. <laughs> Starting a new chapter is always tough for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I have to have the perfect like chapter beginning, which like not every <laughs> chapter has to start with like something like profound or exciting. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, I do for get sure. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the knowing that the second you start writing it on the page, it's not going to be as pretty as it is in your head. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Trying That's to take, yeah, like that whole like mess that's in your head and like <laughs> bundle mm -hmm. it out into like words. Into a cohesive plot. Yeah. Have you guys seen that meme that's like my drawing in my head versus what comes out in real life? <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> yeah. It's Picasso painting on the top and then like somebody's child in crayon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes even just getting my notes down is difficult. Like I have all these ideas in my head and then I'm like, what are the ideas? Like, I don't even... <laughs> Did I have ideas? Or yeah. <laughs> what what are down ideas? Realize it's only like, two sentences and I'm like that felt like a lot more <laughs> <laughs> like a full book in my head <laughs> yeah, all the time like I'm like so excited and I get down and I write down my notes and then I'm like 
oh, I don't have a whole novel here. <laughs> oh, yeah. crap, I've written a short story. <laughs> Yeah. Yay! I'm back. Yes, you're no. here. Hooray! Yay! So we were talking about writing slumps, and what was my first question? How long is how long is your how do you do you consider a writing slump? How long do you consider, it and how do you get out of it? Oh, um. <laughs> putting you right on the spot. The second, right. <laughs> yeah. welcome. Um, I would consider like a writing slump if you haven't like written anything in like two weeks mm -hmm. that's what a lot of us said a lot yeah. of us said two weeks <laughs> two, yeah two weeks and how to get out of it I usually like what will happen is I'll like be watching Netflix or something and something really cool will happen in a story and I'm like oh that's cool I want to do cool things and then I just <laughs> come back to writing yes Oh my gosh, that totally reminded me of how this week uh, I was going to watch Netflix, but because I am a grown woman, I still use my dad's Netflix account. <laughs> and, uh, both of my adult siblings also still use my dad's Netflix account, and they were Bless. watching Netflix. So I went over to the Hulu account, which I do own because I am a grown up. <laughs> And I watched the pilot episode of Lost again. No, and why? like nothing makes me want to write like watching the pilot episode of Lost. Like I would consider selling my soul to be able to write a book that feels like that first episode. Just because it is so mm. inspiring to me. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you were gonna start watching the whole series over again. I would be like, why would you play yeah. that? <laughs> We have very, very different opinions from you on that theory. So yeah. Megan and I love the entire series, including the finale. I will fight yes. you over this. I will. Aaron, I will fight you because you were wrong about the finale. They were not dead the whole time. <laughs> this is I'm the only thing on the episode to say you, you didn't die. <laughs> um be a whole separate chat. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we've had this argument before. Megan so. versus Aaron. <laughs> Just a midweek fight chat. <laughs> Our friendships will be destroyed. We so, can so <laughs> fight over it in real life. I will yes. have my full thesis written out. Of, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just like stand behind Emma yeah. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody probably has been able to write a thesis over. I oh, I'm sure if multiple. it's on the internet, I have read it. Like, yeah. <laughs> have you seen that one question where the guy asks, like, what is it, 20 questions in 20 seconds for Lost or something like that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think sorry. I have. He talks so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole time I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> it makes any sense, yes. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> We have some more questions. Uh, Francesca asked, advice for starting something new after finishing a big project? Good question. This mm. is a chronic slump time for me. Yeah, I would say know that you don't immediately have to like jump into like drafting something else because I used to fall into that trap of like finishing a draft and being like, got to start drafting the next book. And like the next book wasn't ready. Like I had like two pages of notes and that was it. Um, and then I would like get stuck like, a chapter in and be like oh I don't actually know anything about this next book so like it's okay like plotting and outlining and gathering ideas count as work too and like drafting and revising are not the only things that count as work as a writer so it's okay if like you have to spend like a couple months figuring out your next book um that you yeah you don't have to be like creating new words for it to count as being mm -hmm. right yeah I think that's a great time to start plotting like I, I mean, if you don't plot, you can't do this. But I <laughs> plot in pretty extreme detail, and I really enjoy that process. And it's a very different part of your brain. I feel like that uses you use to, to do the plotting. So <coughs> kind of gives that drafting mode a, a rest, and then you know, just have fun with the plotting. Do something different is is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Give that part, the drafting part, a rest, and do something different and something you really enjoy. I feel like to give yourself a break. Something you're really excited for. Mm -hmm. That thing, that shiny new idea that you've been wanting to play with and mm -hmm. stopping yourself. And some of the time it's plotting, some of the time it's research, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. whatever it is. In yeah. cases like that, it's really easy because you've just come off of like 
oh, I was revising 20 pages a day or I was writing every single day. And it's really easy to suddenly feel like, oh, like plotting and creating a mood board isn't as productive. But mm -hmm. like for that point in the writing process, it is. And like that has to happen for you to be able to move on from that big project that you just finished. Wow, Megan, you just set off like a little thing in my brain that went, oh, because <laughs> I, I always feel terrible because I draft so fast and I revise so slow. So I always feel like when I revise that I'm like not doing enough work and then I feel crappy at the end of the day, like every single day. So mm -hmm. now that you said that, I feel better. <laughs> yeah, it's that. just different. <laughs> True. Oh, I'm such a slow reviser. Somebody at the school visit I did was like, how long do you take to write? And I'm like, I'm fast. And I was like, no, I'm not fast. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> like a month to draft and then like a year to revise. Yeah. I'm also a very fast drafter and then a very slow reviser. Mm. I'm a slow drafter and a slow reviser. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're consistent. The whole package. <laughs> I feel like revising takes a part of your brain that is not like, it's not a part of my brain that's particularly like organized or with it. <laughs> I feel like it's like more problem. It's just a, the problem solving part of your brain. Yeah. It's just, yeah. You know, it's, it's like everyday life. You're just like, Oh, you know, this didn't happen. So, okay, we'll do this instead. And like, you know, yeah. instead of like uh, having this happen, we'll like schedule that later. But so you're like used to having like these like little ones. And then when you're revising, it's just like constantly like one problem after the other. And you're like, but I just mm -hmm. use so much brain power to solve this one thing. Like I don't yeah. have anything left for the next thing. <laughs> so coming out of yeah. my I, I yeah. hate when you like, you figure out how to solve an issue in the plot, but then that like cascades and changes a bunch of other things. Like, wait, oh, no, 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 wait, wait, no. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> you need to rewrite half of your manuscript after that yeah after after you rewrite you have to rewrite again yes. yeah <laughs> yes because i do i very much like to be organized when i'm going through revisions so i have like all the note cards and all the colors and everything <laughs> and then i change one thing and it's like mm -hmm. oh wait everything is toppled and now i have to spend yeah. another week just figuring out the ramifications of this one fix mm -hmm. yep <laughs> Yeah, that's why revisions is like my least favorite thing. I have friends yeah, that are like, I love revising. I'm like, what is the matter with you? I love <laughs> the feeling of it. Like, I love when I figure something out. I'm like, oh, that's how I yeah. can make this all work. But I hate mm -hmm. the process of it. That's true. That's I true. love the way it feels when I figure it out. Yeah, I love the way it feels towards the end of revising, where I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, it's ready for line edits. And then I'm like, yes, let's throw a party because we are almost done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something that doesn't yeah. suck so yeah. i really my least favorite part of revisions is filling in all the blank holes i left oh uh, yeah that is the worst oh, that's why I, that i think that's where i get the, yeah. the big writing slump because i'm so intimidated by it bad as like put this here and I'm like uh, create this <laughs> mythology here and i'm like i still don't want to do it <laughs> <laughs> Why do you owe Emma? I would want to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's where my writing slumps come in. I feel a lot like in the revising process because then it's just like add a scene here that like this happens and this happens, and I'm like, I don't wanna. Like it's like, <laughs> like I'm just like I'm just I not. I was do done like, drafting. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I'm like I'll focus on something else. I'll do line edits. I'll, yeah, totally. And then like I get back to that point. I'm like damn it, I still don't know what I'm gonna do. And then I'm like I don't want to worry about it. And like write something new. Yeah. Like that's where that slump comes in. And my actually, manuscript like half done. I actually stopped doing that to myself because it was like once I'm shifted from drafting to revising, my brain will like short circuit if I try to go back. <laughs> <laughs> so occasionally I'd just be like, insert this scene here, and then my brain would be like, nope, don't, I don't compute, like. <laughs> I know, we're done writing, we finished it, it's yeah. done. There's so no more I that can possibly be written. I can't do it anymore, so I will like force myself before, like I'll leave it to the end, but before I shift over into revisions mode, I'll write in the scene. Otherwise I will mm -hmm. screw up my whole thing, mm -hmm. yeah, my whole flow. The revisions <laughs> I'm doing right now have been terrible because I've had to write a bunch of new scenes because of plots that like, subplots that I added in halfway through. So like in the first mm -hmm. half of the book, I had to write a bunch of new scenes and it was terrible. I was like, I already wrote all the scenes. I don't want to write more of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, we're actually doing, I think two weeks from now, 
our live chat topic is revisions. So good. You'll get to hear all of our feels about all of the processes. We've, we've so. only ever done one live chat about revisions before, apparently. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's surprising. And it was like four years ago. It was a really long time oh, ago. All right. Let's it was going. like that was like the first word bird live stream I saw. I remember that one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Weird. That's a really big That's topic. Cool. Um, right? Kind of talked out of a year. We haven't done it more than once. Mm -hmm. Weird. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing it again. Oh, yeah. Hopefully people I think we're specifically talking about how like we revise uh, our processes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mine is like rocking back and forth under a desk with a bottle of wine. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of, staring, do recommend. At, lots of yeah. staring at no cards in my computer screen. It's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why I just haven't revised anything in so long. It's like I can't drink anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to revise after the baby comes. <laughs> Internal screaming. That goes on a lot too. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of that. <laughs> Uh. Um, we had a question. Uh, how did Camp Nano go for you all? Did it contribute to your slumps or help you out of it? Uh. <laughs> the shame I feel. <laughs> <laughs> <That question. laughs> there was no camp for me. I did not camp. I didn't camp. I, I said I was gonna. Same. I intended to camp. According to my little calendar for April, I uh, did writing related work on 10 out of the 30 days. So, yeah. Good job. <laughs> 33%. That's how that works. <laughs> yeah. I think I wrote maybe like 10,000 words. I had hoped to write like 40,000. So, <laughs> close. Uh, it, it neither <laughs> contributed to nor alleviated my slump. <laughs> yeah, I ended up writing, I think, like between fifteen and like seventeen thousand words. Because yeah. the beginning of the month, I was like super productive, and then like after like I don't know, like the tenth, like it just <laughs> that's like when the slump started in the middle of Camp Nano. Yeah, yeah. I only have like three guaranteed days to write so i don't really commit to anything anymore so <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen uh, and people are like oh you can just write during his naps and i'm like ha, have you uh, seen my baby napping it's like 15 minutes and then he's like okay i'm good <laughs> <laughs> takes me that long to get into revisions so that's not happening that's gonna like really benefit him as an adult. It will yeah. just suck for you. <laughs> Napping for 15 minutes. Being able to just nap for 15 minutes, that is a skill I wish I had. Write <laughs> <laughs> in 15 minutes too. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So we've been going for about an hour. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we've talked about right. this forever and ever. And yeah. Do we have any final thoughts on getting out of a slump? Anything you do? I shared my trick with the journal. That's one of the things that helps me. Anything we haven't mentioned yet? Anyone? Just be patient with yourself. Like, it's okay if it takes a little bit to get back in your groove. Mm -hmm. Um it's okay if you have to try a bunch of different things. Like there's no right way to get out of a slump as long as you start writing again, just one word after the other. <laughs> like you will get out of it. It's not gonna last forever even if it feels like it is. Mm -hmm. I'd say be particularly patient with yourself if you deal with any mental illnesses because I know that has a huge effect on slumps for me. Mm -hmm. And I have, to, like, I have to like remind myself like it's okay. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't even count those as slumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're just write off days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, this pun not intended, but like. This is, my panic. <laughs> this is panic day. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. No writing going on. Yeah. No, this is the like chocolate and wine day. Like, this is yeah. just, yeah. this is pajama day with no yeah. writing. Exactly. Exactly. 
Um, yeah, no, that's a great one. Um, being kind to yourself is huge. I think like it's sort of similar to eating healthy or exercising, like beating yourself up when you have a day that doesn't work out the way you thought it would, uh, kind of only makes it worse. So I think being kind to yourself and um, telling yourself you're going to do awesome tomorrow, you know, and rinse and repeat, I think is, mm -hmm. is the best thing, best mm -hmm. attitude you can have. So, yeah. And like finding writing friends who will tell you that when you exactly. are not feeling up to telling yourself that is huge exactly. too. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you for participating in the comment section and all your awesome questions. We will be back here tomorrow. Same time, same place. What is our theme again? Do we know? Not same time. We'll be back next week. Same time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. What's the um, chat again? We are talking about writing outside of fiction. Right. So all your nonfiction Yay. stuff. Nonfiction. Yeah. 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 So excited. Awesome. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.